Okay, so we're back in the hold. Uh, today, our plan is we're going to, well, we've got access to a bit small the engine, we're some cleaning down around here, and then stuff like this, and just where the anode would normally live, we're just gonna give that a bit of a wire brushing, clean it up, um, all this soot off here as well, just try and clean off bits of rust that we wouldn't ordinarily be able to get at. Um, treat them with some rust, rust proofer, uh, and then hammer out them then, so. That's the plan. Okay, so I scrubbed down a load of the rust and stuck the rust treatment stuff on there. That's this here. So it goes on white and then as it uh, adheres to the rust or reacts with the rust, it goes like a purpley colour. So it's not changing colour now. I'm just going to do the back of the engine. It takes like, well, so it recommends then that you coat it four hours after. So it'll be super careful not to get any on the belt or any of the rubber hoses. I'm not sure if it'll corrode it, just didn't want to get it on there. There we have it. So, things we've done today are sandbag the rest, not all the rest. I can see that, you know, there's bits of flaky paint here and this could have had some TLC, but I kind of had to draw a line somewhere and that wasn't really of my concern. But yeah, I did this front wheel here because it was really accessible. Got in and around there. I know my mini work now is that ass black covering um, on a silver engine. That's a future me problem. But yeah, the main one is I've sort of rust proof the main sort of places that seem to be having a tough time with leaky bits um i've painted that as the, the, the fitting that goes in there too um can't get the other zinc out so i'll stay into the end of the season i swapped out this sink here so when this goes back in there'll be a brand new zinc all sealed up yeah so it's time to start putting it together as things as parts come in so rear zinc anode three me nil still can't get it out even managed to climb up on top of the engine with the spanner to the rear and really got into it. So the next part now is uh, it's got some casing behind it. Those bolts generally tend to be greased. They'll be easier to get going. There's electrical fitting on the end of it, which I guess is the heat alarm or the overheating alarm. So I'm going to go back, do a little bit of reading, see what's likely to happen when I pull that off. But that's probably where it's going to be. Take it off and take it to the bench. There it was gone. Proper coming down then at the stick the sort of hold cover on because the water was blowing in through the hatch. I didn't want to shut it up completely because I just sprayed a ton of really soil in the back of the engine. So now the excitement's over, let's get back at it. Well I was still at it really when it was on, but nothing to it. Just excitement. to improve situations even more. Um we're still in the back of the hold doing work there. And a thunder lightning storm just started. So good news is I'm not the tallest boat in the marina. Bad news is I've had to shut the rear hatches, which I was using for ventilation. Uh, I got rubber shoes on, even though I'm laying on my side. Um, yeah, so if I don't poison myself, I get electrocuted. Oh, Things are looking. I up. would have been down in here a lot quicker, but I forgot. Well, I thought I forgot my big spanner, so to walk all the way across back across the marina, um, only to find out they were in a different box. So this is the plan. Eesh. Here we are in the back of the engine here, this is the, the Anmar 2QM15. I'll try and do this now so my helm. So that is my rear zinc. I mean, that's a better position for the phone. I, it is not coming off any way, shape or form. So I've sprayed it with the release oil. Um, I'm going to kind of get after it really. Still, engine in bits and pieces, kit form. So I've yet to put the thermostat back in. That's going to be for another day. Because I haven't got the thermostat yet. So let's have a go at this. Okay, so we haven't given up on that um, rear zinc at the moment. We're still going at it. So we've sprayed some of this, just Halford's release spray on there. Um, in fairness, considering I'm climbing into a cupboard, which has got an engine and a human body in it at the time I'm deploying this, there's an impressive list of hazardous issues that I've got the body. For. So I've probably a pair of gloves on, probably could do with a, a 
PRPS suit or some sort of respiratory suit, but uh, holding my breath and not getting it in my eyes. Uh, put that on about five, ten minutes ago. With, um, a bit of a guard underneath it so it doesn't get into another part of the engine. So we're going to go down now and see if Let's it's good. Get back in here with 13 mil. That's a bit better. These are like a bit easier to get at, I think. Well, a bit easier to get at, I think. Much more happy to come off. So 13 mil bolts on this housing here. So the thing I just unplugged was the uh, sort of heat sensor. Came off super easy as well, which is interesting. I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing. That's come out nice and loose. And it's got a washer on it, just perfect for dropping into the bilge. So take it out. Put in the little thing I've got here. The other downside as well is you can tell you're having a great time fixing engines when keep got a hefty billing head torch batteries actually run out my third set of head torch batteries since since beginning this whole adventure I've got oh. so as you can see, I got a bit of a cloth just underneath there, so actually a bit of paper. Um, largely, that's because I, the other day I was spraying uh, release oil, this release spray on it to try and get the zinc moving, which didn't work. So I figured I'd sort of put that underneath there because I didn't want to release anything else, if that makes any sense. Uh, but also now, I have no idea what's going to come out the back here, because I don't know if I mentioned, but I don't really know what I'm doing. Uh, I'm kind of using a combination of um, blog posts, YouTube channels, um, instruction manuals, uh, and engine drawings to kind of common sense my way through this. Um, so far, what seems to be happening is the common sense approach is leading me just to take more and more bits off my engine. Um, but I'm hoping that this will be the last bit to come off the engine. It's the four bits out. I'm just hoping now that when I pull this, it comes away. Now, one or two things might happen when I pull it away. A, nothing happens, and it gets stuck, and I've got a whole other thing to do. Um, two, I pull it out, and tons of water goes everywhere. Um, there's not much left in the block, but still, it's there for anyone to take, which also then, that's it. Oh, it's came out, pretty nice. That residue there, it's probably not a good sign for what we see when we do the big reveal. And the big reveal is, the reason it won't come out, that is pretty grim isn't it so we're going to take this off give it a good clean away i've got the gasket for it i'm going to clean all that crap out the back there and this engine's going to be super super stoked then so this crap it's a free game isn't it really oh god like that's terrible it's solid um that could also be affecting the heat sensor i absolutely is sorry i'm looking at there like that is solid um but it's right next to the heat sensor so that could be causing a problem with it picking up more heat and then not being dissipated through the system so that's worth thinking about isn't it is pretty much if it isn't doing what it says on the box there's going to be a problem because the box is always right so some video magic we have now taken it to the bench 
you know good things can happen when we get an industrial vice in and a workbench so plan here is to we're going to take this zinc out so we'll put this in the vice now and get after it with this fitting here and then like you can see all this crap coming out of it and then we will super duper carefully take all this off uh, without upsetting the heat sensor anymore um you can see this sort of coloring on the heat sensor perhaps that's a bad thing i don't know don't want to break it don't want to mess with it because i'm sick of buying stuff for this engine i just want to put stuff on don't want to buy stuff anymore uh, so that's where we're at so let's start doing stuff Well, got that out. That was again another mission of a um, zinc to get out. Like, proper job. So things I had to do to get it out. A was I had to reinforce the workbench. So like we just got it made out of ply. Um, not ply, just out of planks really. Um, but they were all twisting and making concerning noises. So I've sort of had to just sort of reinforce it there. That's good. Needed to do it anyway. So that's good. That's done. Uh, and then I fell over because when I finally cracked it, I hit the deck, which was fun. Wearing well, flip flops on the concrete floor, um, but I'm a big boy, I won't go on about it. On my knees, on my knees, on my knees. Um, so, next thing to do is take this off the zinc because that is not very well, and then we're going to get in all of this crap here. So, um, a couple of people have been asking me what the score is with the zincs, um, as in when should they be replaced. Um, again, can't stress enough that I'm kind of making this up as I go along. Realistically, the information I found is once it starts break, like either do it once a season and twice a season, or it might be suggested by the people in your area. But once it starts sort of uh, crumbling, or you can kind of make bits crumble off, then it's time to sort of change it up. So just by taking this off, like all of this stuff here has been sort of coming off. So that is well and truly done. I think I've noticed with both of these. Sorry. Cheers for the sense of light, Dad. It's awesome. Um, the yeah, on the new packs they come with a rubber washer fitting, and uh, neither of these have had it. I don't know how long they've been in for. Like that looks okay as a as a, um, a washer. It's getting changed anyway, uh, but I'm just trying to work out how long they've been in there. I don't know really, but that is dead. So that's come out. It's going to be all got a new. So just started taking this out and thought I'd. Uh, bring you guys in on it because look how easy it's coming out it's pretty minging like that is corrosion build up obviously as you guys can see it's coming out with just a screwdriver and a the the big boy adjustable spanner So that's cleaned it up a bit. I have to give it a bit of a wash out now and a bit of a scrub, perhaps with some wire wool. Uh, but this is the stuff that came out of it. Like that's pretty, pretty hardcore. It's a fair old pile of crap uh, that's come out of here. So that's not just from this one zinc. That's probably from several zincs uh, since the engine's been installed in the boat. So it's worth considering. I've seen a lot of videos with the Yanma uh, with this with this engine, the Yanma Two GM fifteen um, uh, QM fifteen. Sorry, not the GM. Uh, it's with people who are having overheating problems, and they take the zincs out, they change the impeller, they check the impeller, they check a bunch of other stuff. Um, if you haven't done it already, it could well be worth you taking this heat housing off the back and giving it a good clean through because that is that was really jammed up. All everything was like baked and caked all in and around here. Um, but also, as you probably noticed from earlier in the video, that went inside the heat exchange as well, and that crap did. So I'm now going to have to get in there and clean it out and get it out some shape with some imagination. The only other place I haven't checked, which we'll look at, um, I'm not going to take it apart on this particular um, job, 
the last part for overheating that could cause an issue is the exhaust elbow we'll have a look at it later in the video and i'm back on the boat um but because it's like double skinned so it's like the outer skin and then there's like a smaller skin inside and the corrosion and all this crud could come up and could block that and stop the flow or at least reduce the flow enough that causes overheating so this combination of things usually is an issue so right now the take you apart part of my brain is saying take that bit off because it's really dirty and then the sensible part of my brain is going but you don't know what will happen when you take it off and it might be a nightmare and it might cost you hundreds of pounds to replace the part so let's see which part of my brain wins Okay, so according to the engine, uh, according to the engine drawing, there's no gasket in here, so let's take it apart. So, get some clean in there. So it was super, super stinking around the edges of it. Just figured since I'm in here with it all in bits, let's take it apart and give it a good clean. Uh, yeah, that's cool. So there's um, just a bit of grease around the edge here um, I suppose really PTFE would probably do it because it's just a water system and I can give this a sort of gentle clean but I'm not going to mess with it too much that's actually in fairly decent nick happy days so when left to my own devices I think we all know that um, whether I should take things apart if the choice is whether I should take things apart or not things come apart Ooh bucket of warm soapy water with the uh, uh, housing in it and the sink housing too well the sink area so they're in there and then uh, assortment of wire brushes and wire wool i'm going to give everything a bit of a bougie day the bolts that i've wrapped up so i can't lose them uh, i'm not going to submerge this because that looks electrical so it's not going to wet even if you've got a cover on it but we are going to give this a bit of a clean perhaps with just a soapy rag or simmer or nothing Let's see what happens as if by magic everything's nice and clean now um so this is still got a little bit of scaling inside it there but obviously way way better than it was nice clean flow the anode of taking that off uh, the zinc has come off I cleaned up the face surface here there's gonna be a rubber fit in here anyway between the zinc and it and i'm going to change out the copper um washer there's no cut it's gone it's come off now i'm taking it off i got all the grease off cleaned the threads up um, same with this, so just give it a little bit of a clean on the end, there was a bit of oxidisation, just tidied it up more than anything, I didn't want to play with it too much, so I don't know what it does, well I don't know how it works, I know what it does. So that should be the end of me taking stuff off the engine, uh, a little bit more cleaning to do inside it, but that doesn't constitute taking anything off. Now, next bits are putting everything back on, so stay tuned for that.